The beginning of the book of Genesis has a talking snake that misleads Adam and Eve and causes the fall of humankind. Were there really talking snakes? Cue the ominous lighting, and let's talk about it. In Genesis chapter 3, we have a character come into view that is called a Nachash in the original language. This Hebrew word, which uses the Hebrew letters Nun, Chet, and Shin, is often translated as snake. However, with the vowels of the verb means deception and divination, and with the vowels of an adge adjective actually means shining. Some scholars have pointed out that this word used in Genesis may be somewhat of a triple entendre, and that in all three concepts uh, are actually being used for this creature. This serpentine being holds deceptive knowledge and is being referred as shining is a common theme throughout supernatural beings in the Bible and other ancient Near Eastern literature. For example, the name Lucifer taken from Isaiah chapter 14 is not a name as much as it's a transliteration of the Latin word meaning light bringer or morning star. The King James translators borrowed the transliteration of this phrase from the previous English translation of the Wycliffe Bible. You'll notice that the word Lucifer isn't used in modern translations of the Bible, and instead they go with the literal translation of the Hebrew Helel ben Shachar, or Hiasphorus in the Greek, and transliterate it as morning star. The point I'm making, though, is that Satan here, and there in Isaiah 14, is associated with brightness. In both Daniel 10.6 and Ezekiel 1.7, the supernatural beings are said to shine like polish brass. And in Isaiah chapter 6, in his temple throne vision, we see winged creatures called seraphim. In Hebrew, the word seraph literally means it burns. And interestingly enough, the Hebrew noun seraph has a parallel in Egyptian that is the common word for snake. If we go to the archaeological record, we have a number of Hebrew inscriptions that include pictures of these creatures. The seal or bulla of Ashna, who appears to be a servant of King Ahaz, has Yahweh depicted in the middle as a glowing disc wearing a crown, and surrounding him are serpentine seraphs. And there are multiple ancient Israelite artifacts of these types of depictions showing supernatural beings being portrayed as winged snakes. In fact, in the intertestamental book of First Enoch, which I talked about last week, and you should definitely go back and check out that video, it appears to use the words serpents and seraphim interchangeably throughout the passages. But how does all of this play into the fact that what we have described in Genesis is a snake, and particularly one that is cursed to, quote, crawl on the ground in the dust? If you flip to Genesis 3.15, you'll see that it says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He will bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. I think we can all agree that there's a metaphor going on here. There's far more than just the sentiment that women are afraid and cautious of snakes. The verse previously, however, reads, Cursed are you more than all beasts and more than all living in the field. Upon your belly you will go, and you will eat dust in the days of your life. There are components of symbolism here, but it does sound like we're talking at face value about literal snakes. This is where we need to ask the question, okay, I see the at face value reading, but whose face am I talking about? What I mean by that is that the ancient reader might have understood this or other passages differently, and understanding those differences helps us in the modern era to bring out the intention of what the original author is talking about. In the ancient Near East, the concept of being brought down and eating dust has a more profound connection, and we can see this other places in the Old Testament. In the book of Jonah, Job, and Isaiah, as well as other Akkadian and Ugaritic texts, the concepts of being cast down to the dust or earth can refer to being sent to the underworld. In fact, in the Epic of Gilgamesh, it refers to the underworld as the house of dust. Passages in the Hebrew Old Testament describe the abode of the dead, Sheol, as a place where one dwells in the dust. One connection that scholars have made between this use of ancient language is that when the author of Genesis 3 says, you will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life, they're evoking the image of divine punishment. 
Satan is later recorded as walking around and interacting with God in the book of Job and even verbally sparring with traveling with Jesus during the 40 days that he spends in the desert. Satan is clearly walking upright in those instances of him being mentioned throughout scripture. So I think what makes most sense in the Genesis passage is that this is figurative language being used to evoke or communicate punishment and retribution against the serpent when he's cursed to crawl. The question, do you take the first few chapters of Genesis literally, in my case is yes. But more than taking it literally, I take it seriously. The Bible was not written to us. There was a different original audience. But while it wasn't written to us, it certainly was written for us. And as I've said before in my articles and in my videos and other presentations, when we understand who scripture was written to and how they would have understood it in their original context, it can better help us millennia later to apply it properly, consistently, and applicably. Satan within scripture appears to be one of those beautiful, shining, supernatural beings. His description as serpentine is both meant to be taken literally as well as symbolically as a common picture of ancient forbidden wisdom and craftiness. If you want to hear more about answers to questions concerning uh, what's going on in the Bible, the Christian worldview, and answers to a lot of other really big questions, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and check out some of the other videos and content on my channel.